and into God's courts with praise. Be thankful unto God and bless God's name, for the Lord is good. I like to let people just shout out for that right there. The Lord is good. The Lord is good, church. God's mercy is everlasting, and His truth endure to all generations. Would you bow for a word of prayer? Gracious, kind God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for one more day on this side of heaven. God, we just thank you for all that our eyes have seen, all that our ears have heard, and all that our hearts have felt down through the years. Surely, God, our testimony is down through the years. You have been good to us. God, we thank you for letting us see another Advent season, a season of where we are in expectation of what is to come. Thank you, O oh God, for this season of thanks, this season of praise, this season of looking forward to things turning around in our lives. God, we just bless your holy name on today. We thank you for traveling grace and traveling mercies that allowed us to arrive here safely on today. We thank you, oh God, for all that happened last week, but all that's behind us. We thank you for what is before us and what is still yet to come. We thank you, oh God, for another opportunity to come in and worship with the people of God. God, I ask that you would move in a mighty way in this place. Shower down upon each and every one of us. God, release the spirit of praise in this place. Release the spirit of praise like they've never experienced before, oh God. Release the spirit of worship, oh God. Let us come out of ourselves and just focus on you, oh God. Let us, God, turn everything over. Lay it on your altar. Place it at your feet and focus on the almighty God of today. Oh God, anoint the choir as they sing the songs of Zion. Anoint the people that will participate in the skit on today. Anoint the minstrel as he plays, oh God. And I ask, oh God, that even the hearers, you will anoint them to worship you in spirit and in truth in this place on today. Oh God, whatever you decide to do, we are open to it in the name of Jesus. If you need to change it, we are open. If you need to shift it, we are open. If you need to turn it around, we are open, God. We are open to the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit to come into this place right now. Oh God, help us to put all and praise your holy name. God, this is our prayer. We lift to you in Jesus' most precious holy name we do pray. Let all the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to personally welcome each and every one of you to Empowerment Liberation Cathedral Church, ELC, where we are an affirming church. We are an inclusive church. We are a church that celebrates all of God's people. We celebrate LGBTQ Christians. We celebrate heterosexual Christians. We celebrate non-conforming Christians. We simply celebrate all of God's people. We offer God's love to each and every one of you and every person that walks through these doors. And so it is our sincere hope that you will find the love of God in this place and you will have that connection that you so desire with the one who created you and made you in their own image. So once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our Advent season, and so Advent is taken from a word that simply means coming. And so for Advent season, we are in expectation of what is to come, of the one who is to come, and change things, turn things around, make things better, save us, deliver us, change our lives from that day forth and forevermore. And so we have themes for Advent season. Last week we know the theme was hope. This week the theme for Advent season is love. So we'll be talking about love, we talked about love on the Word Wednesday study call, and so today the theme will be love for this church. And so what we often try to make sure that everybody experiences here is love, the love of Christ, the love of God, the love that you so truly, truly deserve as one of God's people. So we want you to remember that today the theme for Advent is love. At this time, we want to also make sure we incorporate, even though we have a longer program today, we want to incorporate the time to just get up and greet two people and tell them God loves you and so do we here at ELC. So very quickly, if you can tell people God loves them, two people, and so do we here at ELC. We want people to know that God loves them and we love them here at ELC. Come on, you faithful.
everybody knows I sit here on Sundays. I don't know who you are or where you came from, but I'm going to need you to get out of my seat because I sit here every Sunday. Holiday. So now we are ready 
Oh, I'm trying to do the, I'm trying to finish the announcements before the pastor get up here and throw one of her stilettos at me. And it is going to be on up in here.
I had to buy my baby some pants and milk. And my baby daddy, y'all know, we ain't no longer together. He left for Jason, took all the money, left it with $10, and now he won't even answer his phone. That's why you need to be in the casino, Man, you are a Christian trying to go to the casino and win some money. Why don't you trust trying to give it to the church and let God multiply your money? Christians need to stay out of the casinos. And as a matter of fact, stop being at the bar so much. Stop being at the club and every party that is given. And you know I'm talking to you. We need to understand that. <clears throat> As an LGBT Christian, we are loved, we are blessed to be made in the image of God. That's right, brother. I do believe as LGBT Christians, we are blessed. Now that I'm at ELC, I just needed to have heard that many, many years ago before I left the church and said I would never return. I needed to know that God loved me and made me in his image and that he was okay with my lifestyle. I needed that. But I'm so glad I have that now here at ELC. And that's why I tithe. That's why I give. That's why I participate. That's why I share my gift and I'm faithful. I even have started to believe that God can bless my finances if I'm obedient and faithful in my giving. Well, in my opinion, God takes too long to do this multiplication. <laughs> you can say that you can get your blessings in one hour. <laughs> With the Lord, it may take one month for a whole week. Well, say that one more time. Well. I'm giving my last to the Lord. I'm committed to God, the church, and to all that God tells me to do, unlike some of us. I tried God last week. I still ain't got my returns yet, so I'm going to hold on to mine this week. God bless those for themselves, and, and hold on to your mind. <laughs> Thank you. 
anything to do with your relationship with God. I guess you're right. I think there needs to be some teaching on it. I came from a traditional church, and we were taught differently. What do you mean I wear the stuff all week away? <laughs>
Young Outfit or Music Ministry here at ELC. We have some anointed singers, have some people who truly have the gift of song, and we're just excited to have them here as a part of ELC. Once again, in continuing with our theme uh, for this Advent Sunday, um, as I said earlier, the theme is love. So if you will turn with me to Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, 1 through 10. I'm not going to do a long sermon today. We're just going to do what the Holy Spirit says to do. But uh, we do want to have a word. And I do know that there is a word from the Lord. Luke 7, 1 through 10. If you found it, would you stand for the reading of God's word? When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this. Because he loves our nation and he has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. I want to put a tag on that text by simply saying love is what we need. Love is what we need. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Many of you remember the famous movie, What's Love Got to Do With It? That depicts the life of singer Tina Turner. It shows the ups and downs of her career, as well as the abuse she endured by her husband who managed her career. It demonstrated how when you are successful, sometimes the folk closest to you will become jealous and envious, and they will hate on you when they're supposed to be loving on you. Luther Vandross, the great ballad singer, y'all remember Luther, sang a song, Don't you remember? You told me you loved me, baby. I know some of y'all have sang that song before. One of the oldies but goodies, and it caused many men to sing love songs to women. It caused many men to sing love songs to men. It caused many women to sing love songs to women back in the day. It was known to put many in the mood for love because of its soothing melody and calming lyrics. Now, if we listen to all of the things that our stars sing about and write about, it appears that love is in the minds and hearts of many. But for us to write about it and sing about it so often, we tend to be very minimal with our true display of love to one another. I believe that's what made Tina Turner sing the song, What's Love Got To Do With It? It's a second-hand emotion. She says, y'all know this, she says, who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Church, I used to hear the old mothers and some of the fathers say, love is what love does. And for many years, when I was younger, in my teens, I wondered about that statement. But as I got in my 30s, and then I crossed over into my 40s, and it was evident that they meant, don't talk about love, be about love. As I like to say, oftentimes, talk is cheap. Anybody know talk is cheap on today? Talk, a good name, is not doing anything for anybody. Anybody can say they love you while hating you in their heart. But what the old saints meant is that it takes a real person to follow through and be about what you're talking about. We have seen time and time again that God is not a cheap talker. God understands that talk is 
teach you. That's why God stands behind every word that God gives us. The Bible informs us that God is not a God that he should lie. Somebody's read that before. And that's why God's word does not return unto him void. God is so committed to us that God sent God's only begotten son to save a dying world from their sins. Somebody needs to remember John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I need somebody to know today that with Jesus there is no greater love than one who would lay down his life for a friend. So we see and experience the power and love of God through Jesus Christ each and every day that we live, move, and have our being. Here in the text, the centurion servant was experiencing the power of his master's love. I like this, to be honest and let people know the power of his partner's love. Because when you go and study that text, you'll understand that there was something else going on there that people don't want you to know about. But he experienced the power of his partner's love when he sent word to Jesus to ask for his healing. The servant was experiencing the power of his love when the elders were sent in to see instead to even approach the Savior on behalf of somebody else. That's what we have a charge to do on today, church. Approach the throne of grace for somebody else. Anybody prayed for anybody else lately? Anybody interceded or fasted for somebody else's situation, somebody else's condition lately? Anybody concerned enough about somebody else that you'll risk everything to see their situation turn around? That's love, church. Once again, love is what love does. So the question becomes, how have you shown the love of Christ to others lately? Is your love doing anything or is it just talking? Talk is she. I need somebody to hear me on the day. Talk is cheap and not worth a thing. You can't cash in on it. You can't take it to the heavenly bank. The devil's check cashing places won't accept it. Lucifer's pawn shops won't even consider it. So it's time for us to stop talking about love and being about it. I want to propose to you that humbleness gets the attention of the holy. Here the servant declares that he is not worthy to come before the Lord. Now when you can be honest with yourself and ain't nobody else got to tell you about yourself, you won half of the battle right there. He understood the power and magnificence of the one he was appealing to and was very humble before him. Now being that he was a leader, a leader of many who he had serving under him, he could have been pompous. He could have been arrogant, he could have been selfish, but notice here he has an humble spirit. I believe God is still searching for humble spirits in us on today. You may have the gift of teaching, but you still got to be humble before the Lord. You may have the gift of intercession and prayer, but you still got to be humble before the Lord. You may have the talent of singing or playing a musical instrument or the talent of dance, but you still got to be humble before the Lord. Humbleness, church, pleases God and gets God's attention. Notice here that he tells Jesus, but say the word, my servant shall be healed. The question you have to ask yourself here is what kind of faith, what kind of faith is this that calls the centurion to send somebody else to Jesus and tell him, if you speak a word, my servant will be healed. When I thought about this, I looked at the fact that the centurion wasn't even in his presence. He wasn't anywhere in the vicinity. He wasn't in a service where the power or manifestation of the healings was occurring. He wasn't in the temple. He wasn't in the church. He wasn't anywhere around Jesus, near Jesus. Yet he had the confidence in the Savior's power like none other. I need y'all to look at this. His faith was so great that nobody could shake him on what he knew Jesus had the power to do. That's why he sent his servant to the chief servant from heaven. Somebody got that. Anybody got unshakable faith on today? I need y'all to wake up in here. Anybody got unshakable faith on today? You'll believe God when nobody else will. You'll still, you'll stand still and wait for the salvation of the Lord. Even if you got to stand by yourself. Anybody got unshakable faith in here? You'll trust him in the midst of everything falling down around you. You'll 
trust him in the midst of it not looking like it is going to turn out the way that he promised. Unshakable faith is what you got to have on today. That's why the centurion could send his elders before the Lord to make this request. He had unshakable faith. The strange thing about this is some of us who are in the church all the time, some of us who are in the worship all the time, some of us who have seen healings and have experienced healing. Some of us who have seen deliverances and experienced deliverances. Some of us have been in the presence of the Shekinah glory. The glory cloud filled the place. And we still refuse to believe God with unfavoring faith. In spite of what we've seen and felt in our hearts in, in God's presence, we still don't have that unwavering faith. Church, God is calling for believers to step up in your faith on today. You got to believe for the miracle even when you don't see anything happening. You got to believe for your deliverance even when you don't see anything shifting. You got to believe for your next level even when it seems you're going backwards instead of forward. You got to believe for your power even when it seems like the devil's got more power than you. You got to walk with your authority even when it seems like you're crazy responding to your command. I don't know if y'all hearing me today. You gotta believe for your blessing. Even when it gets held up. Even when it's held up by the enemy. But you know it's on the way. God has commanded us to walk by faith and not by sight. We gotta be able to declare the blessing even when we don't see it. We must walk in faith at all times knowing that God's got the power to do exactly what God said God would do. When we are humble and walk by faith, we get the attention of the Holy One, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here the Bible tells us that when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Now church, to have Jesus marvel at you knowing that you are a gay man or same gender loving man is saying something about your character. We know that Jesus knows the entire world. He knows all about what we haven't told our families, what we haven't shared with our co-workers, what we haven't even talked about with our friends. That's because he's God in the flesh. He's co-creator with God. So he already knows. But when Luke informs us that Jesus marveled at the centurion, that is worth taking note of. Now when we look at marvel, to marvel means something that causes wonder, causes admiration, causes astonishment. To wonder at something surprisingly or extraordinary. So here, church, we see that the wonder himself had a wonder for the centurion. Somebody's going to get that. We see that the extraordinary himself saw something extraordinary in the centurion. We see that the one who is admired himself gave admiration to the centurion. We see that the one who is amazement himself found amazement and astonishment in the centurion. In other words, even though Jesus is all of that, Jesus, yes, he is all of that. Even though Jesus is all of that and some, he can still see something special in somebody else. And at some point in your life, church, don't you want Jesus to be astonished with you? At some point in your life, don't you want Jesus to be wondered by you? At some point in your life, don't you want the Lord to be pleased by you? At some point in your life, don't you want the Lord to be amazed with you? You ought to want the Lord to be pleased every time he looks at you. You ought to want the Lord to be pleased every time he hears your voice bombard the gates of heaven. You ought to want the Lord to be pleased every time you show up in worship, every time your praises go up. Pleasing God ought to be your everyday goal, church, while you're on this side of heaven. 
The centurion spirit, though, is what caught the attention of the Savior. I want to propose that your spirit is what will drive your breakthrough. I want to propose that your spirit is what will drive your breakthrough. Church, there's something about your spirit. There's something about your inner man, your inner woman, that, that will push you into your breakthrough. Anybody know that your spirit man or spirit woman has power? Your spirit man or spirit woman has insight? Your spirit man or spirit woman has a connection out of this world? Your spirit man or spirit woman is what helped you in the past and what's going to help you right now? You need to know that your spirit is going to drive your breakthrough. Here in the text, the centurion man's spirit is what pushed the words, I believe, from his mouth and made him tell Jesus, look, 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 just, just speak the word and I know my servant will be healed. You see, church, one thing that I've realized about saints on the day is that we rely too much on our minds. We rely too much on our flesh. We rely too much on what we're feeling at the moment. But when you got the word of God deep down within you, you're full of the Holy Spirit. You're full of the power of God. You're full of the anointing. You ought to be able to allow your spirit man or your spirit woman to guide you every step of the way. Knowing that your spirit man is connected to God, and God's Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, will never ever lead you astray. You ought to be led more by the Spirit. Church, I need you to realize that your spirit man or spirit woman already knows the answer to your problem. Your spirit man or spirit woman already knows how to get you delivered out of your situation. Your spirit man or spirit woman knows how to, knows who you need to get rid of in your life in order for it to change. Your spirit man or spirit woman knows why you still can't kick that habit that you've been trying to kick for the last three to five years. Your spirit man or spirit woman knows why you can't pray at night. What keeps you up all night? What you're battling with? What's interrupting your praise? Your spirit man or spirit woman knows how to draw you closer to the Lord. That's why we need to begin to tap into the spirit realm and see what God is saying about our suggesting to do to turn things around. We need to let the Spirit drive our breakthrough. Here Jesus marveled at the centurion spirit. It wasn't about his mind. It wasn't about who he had working for him. It wasn't about how much money he had. It wasn't about how much power he had. It wasn't about all of the people he was over. It was simply about his spirit. Church, you got to know that is what moved the Lord that day. Amen. Seeing the centurion's heart and spirit is what moved Jesus in his spirit and thus caused something to happen in the spirit realm. In other words, something happened in the spirit realm at that very moment that turned the situation around forever. The Bible says, and those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Notice here, church, Jesus never spoke the words, your faith has made thee whole. Notice here, Jesus never spoke the words, you are healed. He never cast any demons out or called them by their name. He never laid hands on the servant. He didn't do any of the things that we have seen him do in so many other cases. So how is it that when they returned, the servant was healed? Lastly, I want to propose to you that your breakthrough is in the turning of Jesus. Churches, I, I looked at this text and it came obvious to me that as Jesus turned, as Jesus turned, so did the life of the centurion servant. Jesus turned to address those who had come on his behalf. He turned to address those who cared about his condition. 
He turned to address those who were there on behalf of somebody else. He turned to inform those about the centurion's heart and his plea for his servant. He turned after seeing the spirit and heart of the centurion who wasn't even there, who wasn't even present on the scene. So as I studied this text, the Lord revealed that in the process of Jesus turning, in essence, heaven and earth were turning as well. Can anybody see it? Heaven and earth were turning. And that's when the breakthrough was released. Does anybody need Jesus to turn on some things in your life today? Anybody need some things shifted in the spirit realm? Turned around for your good. Does anybody need Jesus to show up on the scene of the circumstances of your life? Let me see if I can help somebody before I take my seat. If you got some things going on that you can't handle by yourself, I'm just crazy enough to believe that you need Jesus to turn in your life. If you got some things going on that's more powerful than you, I'm just crazy enough to believe that you need Jesus to turn some things in your life. Church, the turning is what occurs in the spirit realm and will thus manifest in the earthly realm. As the divine turns and shifts in another direction, you got to know your circumstance will turn around and shift for your good. I just believe that the Lord is turning some things around for his people on today. But in order for that shift to come in your life, you got to know God for yourself. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. You got to trust in Him with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. You got to know that nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ. You got to know that anything that you need, God will provide. I don't know about you today, church, but I thank God that all Jesus had to do was turn. says uh, that those who were sent uh, when they returned home, uh, the servant who had been sick, uh, it says he was healed. Uh, I'm so glad that I know today uh, that what he's done for others, anybody know it, uh, he'll do the same for you. We need the Lord church. Uh, to turn around uh, so that we can get the healing, uh, the healing that we need. We need the Lord Church uh, to turn around so that we can get our heart fixed uh, and our minds regulated. We need the Lord Church uh, to turn around.
experienced the love of Christ. Maybe you're here and you experienced it years ago, but you haven't been feeling love in any place recently. If you are here and you haven't experienced the love of the one who is love, you haven't experienced the one who is the creator of love, we want you to know that God's love is available for you all today. We want you to know that Jesus' love is available for our new today. We want you to know that the Holy Spirit's love is available for you all today. All you have to do is receive the love of Christ. We want you to stand. The doors of the church are now open. Would you all stand with everyone on today? If you're here on today and you want to give your life to Christ, we ask that you will come forward at this time. The doors of the church are now open. We have Janice Earl who is coming today. And um, Janice Earl, let me say, my wife uh, talked to them after service one Sunday. Um, she and her partner from Atlanta. Okay. And so uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that she twisted their arm, but she kind of did. And so they turned in the paper and said that they would be members of the church. But I'm so glad that Johnny's had the wonderful privilege of walking up before the people of God and allowing the people to see that she's ready, ready to serve the Lord. And so we just want to celebrate and welcome Johnny's in today. And we want to say that you have all the rights and privileges after baptism. I believe you need to be baptized, right? After baptism, you have all the rights and privileges of every other member of ELC. And we're so glad to have you on today. Did you want to say anything? All right. So let us give God praise once again for Johnny's. God is working. God is moving. We know scripture says, for I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new testament in my new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you all bow? Gracious, kind God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come to the Lord's table once again. We thank you, oh God, for this bread and what it represents. We thank you that it represents the body of Christ, which was broken, broken and bruised for our iniquity. We thank you for this wine and what it represents. The fact that it represents the blood, that pure blood, that divine blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for the remission of our sins. We thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to come to this table once again, closing out 2014 and being able to receive of the Lord's Supper. God, I ask that you would anoint these elements for these your dear people and consecrate them so that we might we might be able to do all that you have told us to do and that we might be able to walk in faith each and every day. God, this is our prayer. We look to you in Jesus' most precious holy name. We do pray. Let all the people of God say amen. Amen. We'll ask everyone to stand. We ask that you'll stand. We want to sing our closing song, I Need You to Survive. We always want our neighbors to know, I'm praying for you. And as you pray for one person, then someone else will pray for you. But you have to be community. We have to be in community with one another. And so we want to sing, I Need You to Survive.
gracious, kind, just, forgiving, loving God. We just thank you for your love and your power divine. We thank you, O oh God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for everything that you've done on 